Despite their seemingly docile appearance, sloth bears can be surprisingly more dangerous towards people compared to other bear species. Their distinctive long curved claws and a temperament prone to aggression make encounters potentially perilous. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. In today's episode, we go over three times sloth bears fatally mauled an innocent human being. Welcome to Final Affliction. On the morning of June 5th, 2022, 43-year-old Mukesh Rai and his wife, 39-year-old Gudia Rai, had gone to pray at the Kermai Temple in the central Indian state of Madhya Pradesh. The area is known for its varied topography, including river valleys, small peaks, and dense forests. More than a third of this large Indian state is covered in trees and is populated by a wide range of flora and fauna not found anywhere else across the country. The forests are home to animals like the porcupine, fox, wild boars, bison, and the infamous Indian sloth bear. The sloth bear is one of eight species of bears and is a native of the Indian subcontinent. The animal is a vicious predator, weighing close to an American black bear at around 300 pounds and measuring over six feet in length. It is distinguished by its disproportionately large claws relative to its body size. These claws can be more than five inches long and are a natural adaptation to dig up termite mounds and insects. They are also a formidable weapon in case of an attack, helping the bear rip through skin and open up its prey's body with one deep scratch. A disturbing fact about the sloth bear is that it is known to be the most aggressive to humans among bears around the world. They see humans as not much more than a frail and slow prey that can make for an easy meal. On that fateful early morning at 6 a.m., Mukesh and Gudia decided to go on a stroll a few kilometers outside their house and visit the Kermai temple nearby to pray. The place was several minutes away by foot and the couple thought this was a good time to catch up with a romantic walk on their way to the temple. However, the path they intended to take went through the thick forests of the Pana National Park and they were blissfully unaware of the danger of walking through it alone in the early hours of the day. Sloth bears are nocturnal animals that hide and sleep in the jungle for most of the day, but it was still regarded unsafe to tread amongst the trees at the crack of dawn when the bears were likely still awake. At 6.30, Mukesh and Gudia made their way back from the temple. The area was mostly empty and the town had not yet woken up. Bears were the last thing on their mind as they took their first steps towards their house. The couple walked among the forest, making their way through the branches and fallen trees. The place was eerily silent, unusual for the bustling and busy central Indian city. They were only about half a mile from their house when they heard some commotion among the leaves. Mukesh looked around but dismissed the sound as a farmer or gardener working at the park. Then, as they were less than two kilometers from home, Mukesh heard a terrifying growl from his left. He looked and saw a large mass of black fur jump at his wife, Gudia. The scene turned from a calm ambience into a nightmare within seconds as his wife screamed and pleaded for help. The bear had lunged at her out of nowhere, taking aim for her neck and plunging its sharp claws deep into her neck. She was overcome with the massive weight of the bear and collapsed to the ground. Blood sprayed out of her neck as Mukesh screamed at the top of his lungs trying to scare the animal away. The bear displayed an eerie behavior unlike a hungry predator would, almost acting possessed and malevolent. It tried to scratch at Gudia's torso and face, inflicting as much pain as it possibly could. Mukesh was frozen in fear for a short few seconds, watching his wife being devoured by a vicious forest predator. Gudia was being mauled and eaten alive, with the bear growling at her with every piece of flesh it bit off. Mukesh looked around for large rocks and managed to throw them at the bear from a distance, but the bear refused to let go, as bite marks and claw scratches started to fill Gudia's body. She lay there on the forest floor in a pool of blood, losing consciousness fast. Mukesh cried and called for help, but it seemed as though there was no one hearing his screams. He realized no help was coming and it was down to him to save his wife's life. 
He jumped at the bear from behind, trying to tackle and punch it. The bear was momentarily thrown off, stepping away a few feet. Mukesh saw the opportunity to drag his wife to safety and pulled her blood-sodden body by the hand away from the bear. But the respite was short-lived. The animal ran toward him and jumped at him in a similar fashion as it did with Gudia. It immediately went for the neck, trying to end his life as swiftly as possible. Its razor-sharp claws plunged deep into Mukesh's soft neck, damaging his spine and nerves and paralyzing him. Their fate had now been sealed as Gudia had lost consciousness and Mukesh lay paralyzed and helpless, bleeding away as the bear circled their dying bodies in a cynical fashion. Villagers nearby had heard the commotion by this time and reached the spot where the screams were coming from. What they witnessed at the spot was a gruesome sight. The bear guarded the couple's bodies, refusing to let go. It had dragged them to a pool of water a few feet away and nibbled and chewed at their bodies, taking out chunks of flesh bit by bit. The villagers tried to scare away the bear, throwing rocks at it in hopes that it would run away so something from their dead bodies could be salvaged. But the animal did not budge and gunmen had to be called onto the scene to shoot the bear dead. The bear displayed erratic behavior, pulling their arms and smelling their bodies while showing frantic and jittery body movements. The bystanders and authorities tried to scare the bear away without having to kill it so they could study its odd behavior. After five hours of the terrifying ordeal, the animal was finally tranquilized and transported to a nearby vet research center for analysis. It was later found that the bear was in the final stage of rabies and had launched the attack out of confusion and irritation. It was in pain from the infection and likely did not kill the couple to eat them. After only a few hours in captivity, the bear died from rabies. But the news spread to the park rangers who were ordered to close the park immediately and call back anyone working there. Fear of the infection spreading took over the town and hundreds more animals had to be tested to make sure nothing else had contracted rabies. Authorities claimed that increasing deforestation had forced the bears to come closer and closer to human settlements in search of food. The central Indian state records some of the highest instances of bear attacks around the world due to the proximity of bear and human populations and the lack of proper regulation and safety measures. The attack was also attributed to the time of the year, as June was the month of the Mahoa tree flowering, where bears would come to feed on the trees and humans would try and harvest them for profit. It was a chain of unfortunate events that brought the sloth bear and the couple dangerously close, compounded by the disease the animal was suffering from. The news of the death spread across the country and the gory nature of the attack added to the fear of bears in human populations that lived nearby. More than 50 sloth bear attacks had been recorded in the state consistently for six years since 2015, with several people in the area showing damaged limbs, scratches, and bite marks. The Indian government gave the family of the couple 400,000 Indian rupees in compensation, equivalent to around 5,000 US dollars. But the news of the death devastated friends and family of the deceased. Their bodies could not be identified until later the next day, as their faces and bodies had been mauled beyond recognition. For Mukesh and Gudia, a casual morning stroll turned into a harrowing ordeal within a few minutes as they died trying to save each other while being torn apart by a formidable forest predator, bringing them both to their terrifying final affliction. Amblipani Kohotra is a village located in the Dahod district in the southeast of India. It's one of those places that seems to have found a balance between the modern world and the old ways. Tribesmen in their traditional clothes walk the streets among the market stalls and cattle roaming free. Farmers still work and harvest from the land like their ancestors have done for thousands of years, and women stroll with baskets of produce balanced on their heads. The countryside is lush and wild, littered with jungle terrain, farmlands, and sanctuaries to keep the indigenous animals safe from poachers, as well as a convenient way for tourists to come and see them. Amblipani is nestled close to one of these sanctuaries, the Sloth Bear Reserve, set out to preserve the endangered Indian bear. The locals have all seen one of these magnificent animals at one point or another, and for the most part, 
people stay as far away as possible from these animals. They are by nature aggressive animals, unlike their black and grizzly cousins who will avoid people unless protecting their young or scared. They prefer to be left to their own devices, something that the people of Dahod are more than happy to give them. December in India is a quiet time in nature. This is usually when mothering animals retreat into the overgrowth to spend the last few months with their young before setting them off by themselves when spring arrives. Also, there is more food the farther away from people they move. And given that this is the dry time of the year, the animals only come out when food is at its scarcest. And that seems to be the case for a mother sloth bear and her cub. She'd had her pair of cubs two months ago, but the smaller of the two had already died. It was much weaker than its sibling, and the scarce winter foliage and the struggle of fighting its larger and stronger brother for milk had just been too much for the young cub. The female was incredibly protective of her only remaining offspring. She didn't much like going so close to the human settlements, but that's where the food led her to go. And she needed to feed herself and her cub if they were going to see the new growth in spring. On that day in 2021, the bear and her cub on her back were rooting for termites and bugs among the hollows of tree roots. That morning, Sanjali Rathwa was also looking for food, but not for herself. The 42-year-old needed to get her cattle out to graze as early as she could. Even in winter, India is still warm, albeit dry. Sanjali led the herd into the canopy of the trees before the sun could get high, and they could at least find some shade while her animals ate to their heart's content. Sanjali genuinely enjoyed the quiet and stillness of the wilderness, with only the sounds of birds and the crunch of hooves to break the silence. The first three hours went as expected, and Sanjali even found a spot to rest underneath a tree for a good hour before the herd started moving deeper into the bush. She sighed, but decided that there were plenty of other places to keep herself company with her own thoughts, wherever else the cows decided to graze, and set off after them. The sloth bear, with her cub still riding on her back, became acutely aware of the approaching herd of bovines. She yipped at her baby to keep him quiet and made her way up the nearest tree to safety. It was best to wait until the creatures passed before she got back on the ground. But to her already vexed agitation, the cows settled right around the tree she was hiding in. It was not a very high vantage point, barely two meters tall, and she didn't feel especially well hidden. Intermingled with the smell of herbivores, there was another scent, a human scent, that she didn't like at all. Humans were loud and dangerous. She avoided them at all costs, especially now that she had a young one to take care of. And to the bear's great unease, the human walking behind the herd started walking over to the very tree she was hidden in. Minutes dragged by, the woman below in the shade, completely unaware of the animals above her. The mother sloth bear and her cub were so camouflaged that they practically disappeared into the foliage above. The cub's long wait on its mother's back, with only her breathing to lull it into a stupor, slowly drifted off to sleep. Its claws relaxed, and before the mother could stop him, he went tumbling through the branches. The black cub, which resembled a small dog more than a bear, landed with a thump on Sanjali's crossed legs. She let out a startled yell when the flailing baby bear landed on her. Her shout set several things in motion all at once. A flock of birds shot into the air. Her herd of cows took off running in fright and the mother bear above Sinjali's head let out a roar of panic and anger. She leapt off the branches just as the woman looked up at the sound from above and landed with her full 200-pound weight on top of Sinjali's head, claws already outstretched. Her nails dug into Sinjali's neck and cheeks, tearing and ripping at every inch of her that they could reach in a frenzied attack. The woman was crushed beneath the immense weight of the fully grown bear and she could only try to grab hold of the thick and coarse fur in an attempt to get it off of her. But it was of no use. Sinjali, weighing only 120 pounds at most, was no match for the mother in full protection mode. The claws on her neck yanked away, tearing out a large chunk of muscle and skin. 
the arterial spray that evacuated the wound coated Sanjali, the bear, and the tree in bright red blood. The animal rolled off, got its feet under it again, and went after the screaming woman once more. Sinjali's hands went to her throat the moment the weight was off her, trying desperately to stem the torrent of blood. On her knees, she attempted to get up to run, but she'd lost so much blood so quickly that her knees promptly gave in on her, and then the creature was on top of her again, her jaws closing over Sanjali's whole face. Her teeth sank into Sanjali's skull and under her jaw. The animal shook Sanjali like she weighed nothing, and Sanjali was already too weakened from her injuries to pose any resistance. Her limbs flayed with the force, and her body was limp. The bear shook her a second time and realized that the human had stopped moving. She released Sanjali's head, and the woman lay lifelessly on the ground. A sniff was enough to assure the mother bear that the human was no longer a threat. So she left Sanjali there to bleed to death under the tree and to find her cub, which had stayed hidden behind a large boulder nearby. She decided it was safer to live off less food in the deep jungle after all, and the pair trotted into the foliage, never to be seen again. The day wore on, with no one in the village having any idea of the horrendous tragedy that had occurred to their neighbor. It was only when the small herd of cattle driven by schedule and the knowledge of where their shelter was, came walking back into town, that the people realized that something was very, very wrong indeed. Their handler was not with the cows, and they set out to look for her, hoping that she'd taken a fall or maybe fainted in the heat of the day. But by nightfall, after not finding any trace of Sanjali, the authorities were called in to assist in the search. While the village took care of her worried children, the night dragged on. It wasn't until the next morning that Sanjali's remains were finally found. She'd been almost completely scalped from her jaw to the base of her neck, and what was left of her neck was nothing but a raw, shredded open wound. Authorities could at least determine what had attacked her and that her death had been relatively quick. The sloth bear's first clawing had severed the jugular and main arteries. Sanjali had lost consciousness before the rest of her scalping had occurred in the second wave of the attack. There was a funeral paid for by the state and attended by everyone in the village, old and young. The only sloth bear attack of 2021 in India was a fatality, and the victim was a mother, a sister, and a beloved resident of her community who unfortunately met her terrifying final affliction. When you hear the name sloth bear, you probably think of quite a docile, lazy creature who takes its time getting from place to place. But despite its name, these bears are nothing like the creatures they are named after. The only thing that these bears and sloths have in common are their unusually large claws. But how they use them differs completely, as some unfortunate people found out back in 1957. Mysore, otherwise known as Mysuru, is a city in the southern Indian state of Karnataka. It is the third most populous and third largest city in the state, and is one of the cleanest cities in India. Situated at the foothills of the Chumundi Hills, Mysore is a city that is surrounded by nature and beauty. One of the creatures who lives in the forest surrounding the city are sloth bears. Usually quite an introverted species, sloth bears prefer to stay away from humans as much as possible. Like most other wild animals, these bears see humans as dangerous and prefer to keep their distance. However, Every now and then, something will happen which causes a seemingly normal animal to act completely abnormal. This is what happened to one sloth bear in 1957. The story happened in a small village in the Nagvara Hills, 105 miles northwest of Bangalore in Mysore state. A sloth bear had made its home amongst the numerous boulder-strewn hillocks which surrounded the village. From these hills, the roughly 100-kilogram bear would venture down to the surrounding fields of the village, where it would then forage for food. Usually, sloth bears are quite solitary creatures. 
Their main diet consists of foraged fruits and nuts, along with termites and ants. They are able to locate these tiny creatures by smell, as they have extremely powerful noses, which can detect insects up to three meters underground. Upon finding a mound of tiny critters, the bears will scrape at the structure with their four-inch claws until they are able to get to the center of the ant or termite hill. They then suck the insects up through their muzzle. Considering the normal diet of these animals, it came as a shock to everyone in the village when they discovered that someone had been severely mauled by one of these creatures. The man had simply been out in the forest foraging for some fruit when he stumbled across the sloth bear. The animal had also been out trying to gather some food to eat. However, it was badly startled when the villager came across its path. Unfortunately though, instead of running away from the man, the bear began to attack him instead. Angry at being disturbed, the bear charged at the villager. It rose up on its hind legs and slashed at the unprepared man with its massive claws. Terrified and unsure as to whether he should run away or not, the villager was hit in the face by the animal's claws, causing him to lose an eye. Just as the bear was about to finish him off, the villager was able to scramble to his feet and take off into the forest. The bear followed after him, but due to the denseness of the trees and foliage, the man was able to make his escape. Limping back to the village, it was there that he told the rest of the villagers what had happened and warned them to be careful if they ventured into the forest. But not everyone heeded the man's warning. Thinking that he was making a big deal over nothing, a few other villagers ventured out into the forest in order to cut down some trees. A few hours later, only one of the villagers returned, and he wasn't in good condition. He was covered in blood, and his face had been partially torn off. Despite this, he was the lucky one out of his group of friends, as the others had not survived at all. In fact, when the villagers sent a search party out to find their remains, they were horrified to see that some of them had even been partially eaten by the bear. The attacks continued like this for a few weeks, with people falling victim to the angry sloth bear fairly frequently. However, things finally came to a head after one fateful attack. Alam Bucks was an elderly Muslim who lived in a shrine situated between the cities of Arskere and Shimoga with his 22-year-old son. One evening, his son had decided to go out for a walk to get some fresh air. He had been walking his usual route through the forest when he accidentally stumbled upon the infamous Mysore sloth bear. The animal had been foraging for figs in a small field, but as soon as it noticed the 22-year-old at the edge of the field, it immediately began to attack. The bear charged at the unprepared man, growling as it descended upon him. The young man tried his hardest to get away, but the bear was simply too ferocious. Due to the fact that it had killed people before and had gotten away with it, the bear had lost all fear of humans. It began tearing into the young man with no care as to what happened to him. The animal clawed and bit at the man's face, inflicting so much damage that there was no chance for the villager to escape. The young man eventually succumbed to his injuries and passed away. Having finished with its attack, the sloth bear ambled its way out of the clearing and back into the forest. It was a few hours later when Alam began to get worried. His son had been out far longer than he usually was, so the older man decided to go and search for him. Sadly, when he came across the site of the attack, he was heartbroken at what he saw. Lying in the grass, covered in wounds, was his son. Devastated, Alam knew that things couldn't continue as they were. He wanted revenge for his son, but most importantly, he wanted to make sure that no one else ever had to suffer the tragedy of losing someone they loved to the beast. With this in mind, Alam reached out to a friend of his, a hunter by the name of Kenneth Anderson. Thinking that the hunt would be relatively easy, Anderson packed lightly. All that he took with him was an electric torch and a 405 Winchester rifle and a single change of clothes. Arriving at Alam's shrine early in the evening, Anderson wanted to get the hunt over and done with as quickly as he could. He planned to wait until nightfall, when the bear would be more active. 
Starting his search near the fig trees where Alam's son had been attacked, Anderson then ventured out another mile and a half, trying to locate the bear. However, he did not come across the creature during his walk. He stopped at another little clearing where he hoped the bear might forage, but after having no luck there either, he returned to the shrine. The next day, Anderson ventured out into the forest once again to find the dangerous sloth bear and put an end to its rampage. He was taken to the mouth of what locals thought was the bear's cave. However, after throwing rocks into the cave and receiving no reaction, Anderson returned to Alam once again. He told the elderly man that he was not able to stay any longer, but to contact him by telegram should the bear attack again. Only one month later, the sloth bear of Mysore attacked once again. Two woodcutters, who had been out in the forest, were seriously mauled by the infamous sloth bear, as it was disturbed by their actions of chopping down trees. With a sudden ferocity, the bear charged at the two men, slashing with its long claws and biting at them with its sharp teeth. Whilst the first woodcutter was able to escape, even with injuries, the second woodcutter's injuries were simply too fatal, and he passed away. After discovering the two men, the district forest officer of the area contacted Kenneth Anderson again. They wanted the bear dealt with as soon as possible. After receiving the message, Anderson requested for the exact coordinates of where the bear was last seen. He was determined to get the bear and put a stop to the attacks. It took 10 days for the coordinates to come through, which annoyed Anderson as he worried that the bear could have moved on by then. However, the hunter was still determined to catch the bear. He traveled to the hillock, which was three miles from the nearest town. Along with the hillock, there was a nearby lake called the Ayankara. It was here that it was discovered that the bear had attacked another person, a forest guard who had been doing a simple patrol. Setting forth with a rifle, a torch, and a few helpers, Anderson traveled six miles into the jungle. Earlier that day, a man had approached Anderson, telling him that his brother had been attacked by the bear. It took an hour and a half of trekking before Anderson finally stumbled upon the injured man. He had heard the man's pained moans and found him unconscious at the bottom of a tree. Knowing that he couldn't just leave the man on the floor, Anderson picked him up and began to carry him back to the village. Sadly, he only got a short distance before twisting his ankle. This meant that there was no way for Anderson to save the man, and he ended up passing away. Anderson was later found by forest officials, who took him back to the hospital. He stayed in the hospital for a week before he was released. During his time in the hospital, the bear attacked two more people along Ayankara Lake. Finally, having enough, Anderson resumed his hunt. The hunter ended up camping out near some fields where the bear had been spotted roaming. Anderson waited from 5 p.m. until 11 p.m. before the infamous sloth bear made its appearance. Eventually, the animal ambled out of the forest, and Anderson was able to line it up in the sights of his rifle. Taking a deep breath, the hunter squeezed his trigger and finally put an end to the bear's reign of terror. At the end of the ordeal, the Mysore sloth bear had killed at least 12 people and mauled over two dozen others. The reason why the bear suddenly went on such a deadly rampage is still unknown to this day. Some believe that the bear was a male who had once abducted a young girl from a nearby village to be his mate. However, she was rescued by the villagers, which some people believe angered the bear. Another theory was that the bear was actually female and that she was enacting her revenge on humans after having her two cubs stolen from her. But this was disproven once Anderson confirmed the bear to be a male. Whatever the reason for the bear's actions, the people of Mysore were glad to be rid of the beast. They felt much safer with the animal gone. And whilst it is always sad to end the life of an animal, sometimes it is to prevent even more people from meeting their terrifying final affliction.